So we're back at it again with another Build Biology. This time our guest is kind of a legend around here. One of the coolest looking trucks slash car. I don't even know what you define it as anymore. It's just a crazy automobile, great build, really cool guy. You all know him. So up, guys? Scott? How are you, man? Good. Scott from Chuckles Garage. What's going on? I'm pretty happy to see that this is in the shop today because <laughs> we got to see it do some crazy stuff in the yard. That was amazing. <laughs> Now we get to dig into it, see what it's all about, see what all the build process is all about. And I mean, just outside visually, it's just stunning already. It's a 49 Ford F1, not much left of the Ford, full tube chassis, billet front suspension, race car built from the ground up. Yeah. Um, race truck, race car, race thing. So. How much of this on the outside is actually still the factory truck? The entire body is still there. About 40% of the original chassis is still there, mm -hmm. but it's all boxed in and wrapped into the full tubular chassis that's around it. Kind of the same concept as like the NASCARs, how they have the two frame spars and then the yeah. tube chassis around it. And then it's just the 49 Ford body panels on top of the chassis. That's the body panels are all that's left of the original truck. So this is all. Yep. All original. That's all original. And everybody, everybody asks, is that a wrap? Yeah. And it's not a wrap. This is the original paint as we found it. All I did was clean it up and wipe it down. It looks really good. It does look like a wrap. Like visually, even from here, like just a few right, feet away, yeah. it looks most, like a wrap because it's so clean. It's so Most nice. people think it's fake. Yeah. So it's, let's talk a little bit about the arrow. You can tell right away that this is pretty much all business. It's not just... <laughs> Yeah, so this, you know, a, this is version four of the truck. Yeah. You guys, when I did the uh, daily transmission episode, it was on version three. So this setup is built for Pikes Peak. Um, we're running Pikes Peak in Pikes June. Pikes Peak? Yeah, we're running the Pikes Peak hill hold climb on, in June. Hold on, Pikes <laughs> Peak in this, in this truck. Yeah. This is going to be insane. It's going to be fun. I'm so, gonna... And you've done some hill climbs before. Uh, I've done hill climbs, yes, yeah. but not in this truck. So I'm, I guess this arrow is going to make a big difference for you. Yeah, it'll make a big difference. What you don't see for Aero, um, APR is making us a big tri-level wing for the back, a big time attack wing. Oh, wow. But it's got a um, downforce generator, full under tray, uh, rear diffuser, front splitter, and it's all carbon fiber, and it was all made at uh, Air Raid for us, and they built it all in their state-of-the-art autoclave. So this is massive. Yeah, it's all carbon. <laughs> And then this, this bed cover is to clean up the airflow that goes off the back of the truck. Yeah, so it doesn't churn so, up and Yeah, in so you don't get here. a lot of turbulence and so the diffuser can work a lot more efficient. We'll see a little gurney lip here. Let's take a look at that diffuser. And that's all carbon as well? Yep, that's all carbon fiber. Wow. The entire under tray is carbon fiber, front to back. We'll get and a better look at that when it's yeah. up on there. I left out the center section so we can get it on the lift, but you get the idea when you get yeah. under there. Was there any uh, testing d involved with this or for the arrow? For the arrow, yeah. Yeah, Air Raid, Air Raid did all the preliminary testing on it. Okay. And then the actual track testing doesn't start until May 5th. Gotcha. So we can, we can get adjustments and everything. So it's going to have a three level. How, what are we talking? Do you even have um, an idea of the what wing, they've said yet? Or? The wing APR is making it's 78 inches wide, and then it's a tri level wing. Wow. Which it'll make quite a bit of downforce. Because this is all still steel. Yep. So how it's much does this weigh? Steel. The truck weighs a tick over 3,900 pounds right 3, now. 3,900? Wow, yeah. that's actually so it's pretty light. a lot less than I thought yeah. it would be. The class we're running in at Pikes Peak is 4,000 pounds and under for this, for this chassis size. So is there anything else you had to gut out from other than the panels on the outside? Or? Right. Well, from version three, we did a ton of things. Um, we removed the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. We put in these lighter uh, Sparco seats. Mm -hmm. We removed the five inch exhaust that went all the way back yeah. and out through this hole. The exhaust is side exit, like a GT car. We got lighter wheels from 1552. Mm -hmm. What size are they? Those are 18 by 12 in the front and 18 by 13 in the back. That's massive. Yeah, and they're three piece billet wheels, super light. Wow, what size tire do you run? Uh, the rear we run a 335, 3018, and the front we run a 305, 35, 18. 305 in the front, that's yeah. a lot so of So we, we got big meat in the front. <laughs> so other things, we did to lighten it up. 
we removed the rear brakes mm -hmm. the because it had a handbrake so we removed okay. we removed one set of rear brakes gotcha. we replaced a lot of the current bracketry that we had that was made out of steel mm -hmm. with aluminum um, or carbon fiber brackets uh, just everything we could take off the truck that was unnecessary we're going to do yeah so how much did it weigh beforehand uh it's like 40 almost 4200 pounds wow yeah Stripped out quite a bit. Yeah, so you gotta, you gotta get light. Race cars gotta be light. Yeah. Now this is one of the biggest radiators I've ever seen. <laughs> Where did that come from? Um, so Bell Intercoolers is a big partner with us and they make all of our fluid coolers and this is a custom made for Old Smokey. How big is this thing? It's huge. <laughs> it uses, it uses giant, uh, much bigger tubes than a, than a standard yeah, off the shelf. I see that, wow. Uh, radiator. Yeah, um, a lot more capacity. Uh, it's a lot thicker too. Do you know what the capacity is? I don't know what I don't know what it holds. <laughs> but it takes a while to it's fill up. It's a lot. Up. The capacity <laughs> is a lot. <laughs> it takes a while to fill up. See the cage coming through. It looks like mm -hmm. from the majority of it's TIG welded. Yeah, it's all TIG welded. We, there's not one MIG weld on this truck. Awesome. Let's see. You got a couple little vents here. Let some tire smoke out. Uh, it Let lets tire smoke out, out but. The biggest, the biggest thing the vents are for is to relieve the high pressure because when you're, when you're hauling ass, yeah. you know, all the air comes through here and then meets a big parachute back here and yeah. it has nowhere to go. I so, say that's probably one of the biggest deals you had to, to find out about this truck is where everything's actually going to go, how, how the wind's going to travel around Yeah, it. that's why it's been through four different versions. Like we, <clears throat> you know, you, you build it, you test it, you break it, you make it better, and then you break it again, and it's, it's just a long evolution. Yeah, just, I mean, the, the hours they've put into this just to figure out what's... This was not designed to do this yeah. beforehand. Well, this truck was not designed to go as no, fast as you're going to put no, this No, from the stock, from stock, this truck had 86 horsepower. 86. Yeah. And now, now it's at... Now it has over 1,200. Yeah, over 1,200. So that's a, a massive difference. <laughs> it's a little bit. <laughs> Man, you guys found a dimple die set and we're like, yep, let's do it all. Yeah, well, that's a, that, again, is to relieve any high pressure area that's back there. That looks really slick. And this is for the shoot? Yeah, so that's for, we do land speed racing with the truck, too. Okay. So this is the parachute anchor down here. Yep. And this is the little parachute receiver. That's cool. It's real slick. And the speed holes I are cool, I hardly even too. noticed it when it, you know, it was just like, hey, that's weird. There's yeah. a little... Well, the speed holes let you see all the cool stuff, like the tube chassis and the oh, yeah. fuel safe really cell cool. down there. I love it. It fits so nice. And this is, I'm assuming, another jack point, too, if you need it. Yeah, so we actually have, because it's, when, the, when the under tray's on it, it's really hard to, you can't jack it up anywhere. Yeah. So I built some special jacks that slide in and hook to this, and so it just jacks up the front. And then there's a jack setup that pokes into those two uh, the front bumper brackets yeah. and lifts up the front. That's cool. Fabricating tools for your own car is cool too. <laughs> yeah. That's that's something I like to see. This whole thing is just it's all scratch built. Everything's bespoke to it. Well, let's get a look on the inside here. And uh, all right. by the way, I can tell that this is not factory. No. This is all removed. No, these about, didn't these didn't come in 1949. What about the windshield? Uh, the windshield is uh, it's just custom safety glass that fits in the in the factory location. This this is all scratch proof flex in with the rally style little slider here because you have to meet specific mm -hmm. specifications yeah. for everything you're racing so yeah. you're doing multiple different things and uh, the whole you, truck the whole truck has to meet FIA specifications for the race that's a lot of work to get into something this old let's open it up take a look inside but already you see a bunch of Dimple dies, cage is insane. <laughs> lighter is faster. Yeah, lighter is faster. It is a light door. It's a lot lighter than I expected, actually. Yeah, these these trucks are pretty light from the factory, believe huh. it or not. I think the f the factory truck weighs a l weighs under three thousand pounds. Wow. So I made it heavier. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know what's in there. We'll get to that in a minute. Man, the trans tunnel in this thing. Oh, custom sheet metal work. That looks like a lot of work. It's a lot of work, yeah, but it's worth it. I yeah. mean. The engine's set back 100% be behind the axle center line mm -hmm. for good weight distribution, so you have to build a giant, you know, doghouse for the engine. Everything's dynamat on the floor and, uh, well, everywhere. Yeah, this <laughs> thing's a huge echo chamber inside, so to make it so you can function in it, we just dynamated everything. Now, this cage is insane, so there's a lot going on in here. Yeah. That is 
It's all it's all built to the cage is all is built to Kromali? spec. Uh, it's not chromoly. No, it just DOM it's uh, mild steel DOM. Okay. Uh, what wall thickness do they make you run on this? Uh, this is 120 wall. 120, so that's yeah, that's inch and three big. quarter 120 yeah. wall. Wow. And you got a new seat, you said? Yeah. So we got we got new seat from Sparco. I actually got two of them, but only one's installed for the race. Lightweight. Yeah. Um, these are the Sparco Ergo seats. They're pretty cool because when you're street driving it, if you don't want the uh, halo, you can remove the halos mm -hmm. from it. And I assume you're wearing a Hans device. Yeah, you? always Hans yeah. device. <laughs> I like my neck. Yeah, uh, I like how all the steering's tied in. It's really cool. And that's all custom as mm -hmm. well. Everything. What are you running for uh, pedals and brakes? A Willwood hanging pedal assembly. The pedal's just the factory pedal with a pedal cover that we made. Okay. That's cool. And the dash looks pretty all original except for this here. Yeah, so we have two dashes for it. We have an autometer competition dash, and then what this is right here is autometer's uh, dash link setup. Runs through your OBD2 port and gives you all uh, real-time information. Wow, that's really cool. It looks nice. All the other instruments are uh, autometer uh, Z-series gauges. Mm. Looks so good. I love all the little rivets and everything in it as well. It looks so clean. Very industrial. I really like it. <laughs> it's something I, I really enjoy to see. This cage pad's pretty cool as well. Yeah. No, you got to get you got to get player points. So yeah, that looks we really got cool. the we got the suede it's, leather instead uh, of like what looks like an old pool noodle. <laughs> yeah. This is like what everybody. <laughs> now we got the good padding, and then we got the suede leather uh, yeah, stitched uh, really stitch nice. covers. Big mirror. See, does gotta, that actually work? Can you see behind you? Wow. You can't see much, but you can see it's, enough. You get a get. You get good a, for a race car. You get a slight idea of what's behind you. Nothing so you, should be behind you, anyways. You got your brake bias set up in there as well. Yep, you can adjust brake bias from the from the cab there. All the shifter stuff. Is that custom made? Yeah, we we built that on our mill at the shop. Oh, wow, that's really nice. You used to have a handbrake right next to it. Yeah, and you took that out for weight stuff. Huh? Yeah, we just if we don't need it, it goes away. Yeah, we'll probably take out the sweet cup holder too. The cup holder's awesome. Yeah. But well, you got to stay hydrated. My, my, one of my when you get to the top yeah. of that mountain. One, for SEMA 2016, one of my fabricators put that in there as a joke, and it's just kind of stayed there. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get to the business end of this. Check out Under the Hood. All right. Well, we got a... We got a 5.9 liter Cummins turbo diesel that was sourced from a 2005 Freightliner truck. So this is not an original Ford motor, huh? No, no definitely not, not. Not even close. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's not even out of a Dodge truck, <laughs> which is where most of them come from. So what did it come from? It came in a two, 2005 Freightliner medium duty truck. Wow. It was an old FedEx truck. And, and how then, did you source uh, this engine? Um, well, I found it on Craigslist. Yeah. And it was a wrecked uh, FedEx truck and I just peeled it out. This is a 5.9 common rail. And the difference is this one's 24 valves instead of 12 valves. It uses a common rail injection system. It uses these uh, CP3 uh, rotary fuel pumps, and there's two of them. And mm -hmm. they're, they're built by industrial injection, and each of those pumps can support 1,200 horsepower worth of fuel. Each? Each, a yeah. A piece? Yeah. So is there a goal to go even higher than this? Mm, maybe someday when I'm OK with if the engine explodes. But at this point, I'm not, you know, we're focusing on reliability. So everything is overbuilt, yeah. like the fuel system's capable of more power. The turbos are capable of more power. The engine's built to handle much more power than it actually puts out. Yeah. Um, I see you got a little giggle gas. Yeah, we got some giggle gas there. We got a 375 set up from Nitrous Express. It's good for, you know, 375 extra horsepower. The initial, the initial turbo setup on this um, was much bigger mm -hmm. and re sometimes, you know, in certain situations required a little giggle gas to, to get it, get it up. Um, but this, this setup doesn't. So now the nitrous setup now is just for like a little extra hate just, if you need it. Yeah. This turbo setup is built specifically for Pike's Peak and I can show you over yeah. here. For Pike's Peak, you want tons of power and you want low lag time. You want yeah. instant spool. Instant so spool. for the instant spool, we have a Garrett GTX 3584RS mm -hmm. gives you the initial spool. Mm -hmm. And then right here, you've got the uh, GTX uh, 45 series turbo. And this one is the high volume, low pressure turbo. Yeah. So you've got high volume, low pressure, and high pressure, low volume here working together to create a high pressure, high volume turbo, which yeah. is like the perfect storm. Yeah. Um, and then that, this, this setup right here will probably support 13, 1400 horsepower. When do you see boost? When do I see boost? Well, it makes it makes a little under two psi at idle. Yeah. 
So, I mean, Max, like, this turbo is fully angry at about, you know, 2,000 RPM. And what PSI would you be sitting at there? Uh, well, at full boost, we're making a little over 100 PSI boost. 100 PSI? Yeah. Because all these kids at home like, oh, I got 20 PSI. And <laughs> like, yeah. Well, no, we're making over 100. And it's, it's capable of a lot more, but you don't need it. That is insane. Yeah. It looks and so, so yeah. big. That compressor wheel is gigantic. Big so, wastegate dump up top. Yep. When you have tons of pressure like that, you need to deal with it. So what this is, this is a Tile MVR wastegate. Mm -hmm. And this relieves all the drive pressure in the manifold. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't just waste it. Yeah. It doesn't just go to atmosphere. What it does is it, it's almost direct injection here. Yeah. But it dumps it into the big turbo yeah. and helps drive it even harder. That is awesome. It's cool to see. Charge piping is massive. Yeah, it's three and a half inch charge piping. Three and a half, that is. Yeah, and then it goes into this massive huge custom intercooler. belt intercooler, air-to-air uh, -air intercooler. This, this, is, this is a custom pulley here. Um, the rest of it is all factory except for the uh, damper, which is a fluid damper. 100% uh, of the engine's weight is behind the center line of the front axle. Yeah, do you know the split of the car? Uh, it's 57-43. 57-43? So it's got a pretty good weight split. That's really good yeah. for old truck like Especially this. considering the engine weighs 1,200 pounds by itself. So you're really sitting close to this. And then, oh, check this out. This is, so diesels don't produce vacuum. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you don't have any vacuum for your brakes. So, and we took the hydro boost off it because it was big and heavy. So we yep. use this CVR vacuum pump with a reservoir. And then way back here, another weight distribution thing is the brake booster. It's, oh, wow. It's mounted behind the cab. Can hardly get down in there and see. Man, it looks really nice. All the vibrant stuff on there as well. Yeah, so this is one thing. Simple to get out. These are nice. Check it out. So on, on 100 PSI a boost, it's, it was always blowing off couplers. Mm -hmm. So when we got these, these are pretty slick. You just push the little thing there, and you take oh, wow. it off. And then it's got an O-ringed sleeve there. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've had these at you know, 110, 115 pounds of boost. Wow. And they hold the boost. And how thick that intercooler core has to be to take all that as well. Yeah. It, well, That's you know, the more, the more thickness you have, the, the more surface area you have to cool it. So mm -hmm. bigger is better. And I can see a little bit of this tray down here, but I want to see everything now. I can see a lot of suspension work. Let's yeah. get it up on the lift. All right, let's do let's it. Let's check it out. All right, so we got it in the air. Let's see what's underneath this thing. All right. As far as if we can see, because all I can see right now is this <laughs> massive bit of carbon fiber here. Right? Man, that's huge. Yeah, so this is the same stuff that, that Air Raid built for us. Um, it's thick, too. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's got a, it's foam core, and then multi-layer top and bottom, and then if you look here, you can kind of see it in the shadow. Yeah. This is all reinforcement here for yeah, the I can see it. high stress areas and the mounting areas. Wow. That is Really nice piece. Do you yeah, know how much that all, weighs? Almost nothing. Almost nothing? Yeah. And no quarter turns these fasteners to keep it on. Oh, that's really nice. You know, here you can see like all the billet suspension pieces. It's got billet upper and lower arms. Um, they're both adjustable for camber and caster. Yeah. Um, you got the Willwood six piston. Uh, those are some big, yeah. big Johnnies there. Yeah, those six piston Aero 6 uh, calipers and the 15, uh, 14 inch rotors. You got a big sway bar adjustable in the front here. Yeah, so we use, we use the NASCAR style sway bars front mm -hmm. and rear on it. And what that allows us to do is you basically take the ends off of it, slide the old sway bar out, slide a new one in and put the, mm -hmm. put the ends right back on it. Now um, what trans do you run in this? So this uses a Dodge uh, truck transmission. This is a uh, 47 RE and it's built by ATS. The differences between it and the factory one are basically the only thing that's kept is the case. Yeah. Um, all the all the internals are billet. It's got billet input shaft, billet intermediate shaft, billet output shaft, um, billet clutch drum, uh, extra clutches, uh, and then it uses a, a custom ATS torque converter as well, okay. and a billet flex plate so it doesn't and explode I'm under sure power. You, I'm sure you guys overkilled that. Yeah. Uh, how how much power is this? Set to take. I don't know. We haven't broken it yet. <laughs> haven't so, broken it. Yeah, we've okay. we've spun it to fourteen hundred horsepower. So wow, 
And, and this this looks like a custom pan. Yeah. So the the factory the factory Cummins pan was you know about this deep, mm -hmm. and that's not going to work because that's past the scrub line. So what we did was we cut it and we TIG welded on an extra. Now is this all steel? Sump over here. Yeah. This is all. And then, then you can see here we got electric water pump. So we still use the factory water pump. Yeah. Like a high performance factory mm -hmm. one. But then we also add this one in. And that's that, a cool little mount too off yeah. the side here. And it gives easy, us, to, easy access yeah, to every, work on. So. Everything we tried to make as easy to service as possible because it is it is a race vehicle. It's a race car, so you gotta get to it. Yep. And we can see all the chassis stuff where you boxed everything out. Yeah, so everything the whole chassis is boxed in with three sixteenths plate and it's all TIG welded. And then there's a full X member built into the chassis. You can see the frame goes there and then it's got a removable uh, transmission mount here. Yeah, and that's really tight area. Mm -hmm. It looks such good clearance. Like, it looks like it would be difficult to get out, but just because of the yeah, major perfect. size the of it. The transmission actually just drops right out. It's really? Pretty, just it's straight down? Nice. Yeah, because uh, yeah, you're not going to have to have a huge input shaft. To yeah, get out. and then like back here, the, the factory chassis ends right here. Mm -hmm. And then it's all, com it's all tube work. This is all tube that. work from back here. Yeah. So basically, here's your line. Mm -hmm. Everything back. From this point, all that, all tube. So then we got Winner's super heavy duty quick change. It looks uh, like a super heavy duty yeah. quick change. I've seen and a few of these, I've replaced a few of these. Not anything that big. <laughs> it's a big one. It's not one you just want to jump down and set it on your chest and be like, oh, I got it. I'll just, and that, this one requires a friend. Yeah, no, this one, <laughs> so this, this is a 10 and a half inch ring gear. And we were just, you know, you can put any gear ratio we want in it. That's the beauty of a quick change. But like the, the gears in it right now are, I think, two O2s. Hmm. It's got 41 spline axles. You know, you get the big Willwood brakes back here. We got four piston calipers in the back, four link suspension, completely and adjustable. What's you the can, four link from? Did you guys make this? We just made it at the oh, shop. Oh, you made them, okay. Yeah. It's all wow. made at the shop. So this is all your R&D here. Yeah. That's nice. Looks really good. Then you can go. I don't I know if you can see it from the back as well. Look how all this is made. And well, it's got to be strong. Nice. This thing makes a lot of torque, and you you know breaking shit isn't that. This fun. is some big tubing here, and notched out to clearance of drive. Yeah. So this this is actually wasn't in the original design. Oh yeah. But for, and it looks like it touches, but it doesn't. But the suspension will compress. Well, a we bit. changed we changed the suspension to have longer travel yeah. on the version four of the truck. Yeah. And for the longer travel, before it didn't hit here, so we had to notch it out and I was expecting it. a longer drive shaft, but the transmission itself is so long. Right, and the engine's set back. The, you know, yeah. only three, three cylinders are in front of the firewall, yeah. so everything's stuffed back so far, you end up having a two and a half foot drive line. Man, that's, yeah, that's it. Pretty small. Yeah, and then that's like, cool. uh, you can see what kind of shocks we're using on the thing. Yeah, what, what suspension are they? Well, these are AFCOs right now. Um, I box we'll, springs. Be, we'll be switching on that with the I box springs and then they're they're all remote reservoir coilovers front mm -hmm. and rear double adjustable and I assume the just oh there's the adjustment right here yeah the there's valve. the remote reservoirs that's really cool so then I don't know if you can see that's it from a the lot back. of suspension that you never think you'd see on the truck but but yeah we got the I love how you can there's just the diffs just barely peeking <laughs> through right and the again with the thick core here yeah, and then you can see up there we got a 12 gallon fuel safe cell. Yeah, what pumps does this run? Um, the, we run a Pure Flow Air Dog uh, 200 gallon per hour uh, lift pump, and then we run the industrial injection XP3. What, what is the consumption on this thing? Well, it's kind of crazy. It gets, so like on the freeway, it gets really good mileage. You know, you get nearly 30 miles per gallon because the truck 30 doesn't. 30 miles per gallon? Yeah, the truck doesn't weigh anything. Um, I do not know the fuel consumption in race mode. So, or, so you're going to Pikes Peak now? Yeah. Is it a tank going to last you a full run? Yeah, it'll last. Okay. It'll probably use half a tank in a run. Really? Yeah. Wow. And you can see all the, the fans and stuff for that massive radiator. Yeah, the big, the big bell radiator. We got two 16-inch two spall fans on it. You can see the uh, remote um, oh, yeah. brake booster Boost down here better. That's awesome. And all hard piping over here, too. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's hard pipe, but it's also, instead of having uh, hard unions here, we wanted the thing to flex yeah. and have some give. Mm -hmm. So we just use silicone couplers and wow, that looks so nice. throw out there. And here's your massive exhaust coming out the side here. It's actually smaller than it was. This is four inch. We had five inch exhaust on it, 
but this is a huge weight savings. So we use the stainless uh, MBRP mm -hmm. um, bends. Mm -hmm. So you just buy the individual bends and we just built the... Now you did have it running all the way out the back, like you said. Yeah, we so. had a big... So you saved quite a bit. Just come, you can see the hole right mm -hmm. through there. So you saved quite a few. Yeah, saved a, bunch of, saved a bunch of weight. Extra stuff. You want to check out the front? Yeah, let's pop a wheel off and uh, check right, out this front suspension. It. Inside, all the hard work. Wow, I can see a lot more than I thought. Yeah, so you, know, you can... Turbo uh, and everything, but... You can see a lot of the internal stuff here. But, you know, like I said, the Willwood Aero 6 calipers. Those are huge. Floating 14-inch rotors. We use our race pads on it. <clears throat> you can kind of turn this. It. You can, can see the, the suspension. suspension. Yeah. Yeah, little billet, billet, billet top and bottom. The tops are nice because you loosen this little jam nut here and your eccentric wow. is right here. That's really cool. I like that. That's so slick. Yeah, and then so... That's on, machined nicely. On top here, we've got the shock tower that can take um, different size shock mounts. So if I want a longer oh, travel wow. shock, I can swap these two plates out and put a longer travel shock wow. in, on the same tower without having to so cut stuff up. So it would just up. slide up in here because this is, this is what's spacing it down right here. Yeah. So this would move at a different point. Yeah, you there. can move it up. You've got an, you set, if you... So you, do you have spares on, on site with you that, that yeah, you I've Yeah, I've got several different coilover setups for it. Wow. Oh. So what are you running right now as far as springs and... Uh... Uh, springs, I've got uh, Eibach 400 pound in the back and Eibach uh, 1200 pound in the front. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just got some neat little uh, bump springs. So instead of a bump stop, we, yeah. Eibach sells a bump spring, which yeah. is pretty slick. And we're, oh. gonna, we're gonna be putting those in pretty soon. And that'll allow us to bring our spring rate down a little bit. Gotcha. Now, is this is this to be the final form for? Uh... It's never the final form, man. Like I, I mean, I mean for the race. Coming for up. the race, yeah. So the final form will be determined like probably at the last minute. Yeah. Because we're starting testing May fifth, and we're just going to test, test, test until all the way up until until you got to go flying up that hill. Yep. That's awesome. And have you ever driven it before? I've never driven Pikes Peak. Oh, no. this is going to be insane. I'm really looking I can't forward wait to, to it. See it. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. And just looking at all the man hours you have, how many man hours do you think you have into this build? Um, I stopped keeping track at over 3,000 hours. Wow. I still, you know, I still keep track of the, the budget stuff, but not, I don't keep track even of the hours Even the suspension anymore. alone, would you even have any idea? <laughs> no. It's just I have one no of those, because there's. There's so much to see. There's so much engineering and everything else going on here. And this looks great. I can't wait to see it out on Pikes Peak. I wish you the best of luck. I you're can't an wait animal. to do it. I can't believe you're going to drive this thing up there. It just looks like a handful. It's, it's definitely a handful. It is very impressive build, man. And I appreciate all the work that you've done on this. And I'm sure everybody here that's going to watch this video is definitely going to get a, a better look and an idea of rather than just the burnout that you've done before. But Look at all the work that's gone into this truck and what he's gonna do with it. I'm gonna and have some fun. He's gonna have some fun. And Pikes Peak, man, that's, that's up on my list. I gotta, I gotta check that out, so. Come crew with us. Yeah, I might, I might have to go crew with you, man. <laughs> I'll help you throw a wrench on this thing. I'd love to see it, so. Thanks again for coming in, man. Appreciate right. it. We'll high five it too. Well, let's uh, spend another half hour trying to get this off the lift because it's not easy. <laughs>